Okay, where we left off. First Samuel 25, verse 22. So and more also do God unto the enemies of David. If I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light, any that pisseth against the wall, we talked about that last time, six times in the Bible. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted, she's quick, and lighted off her ass, Rebecca lighted off her camel, and fell before David on her face. You say, well, why did you say that for? Well, David's a type of Jesus Christ. Isaac's a type of Jesus Christ. Abigail's a type of church. Rebecca's a type of church. And fell at his feet. Oh, won't that be the day when we fall down at the feet of Jesus? We're not going to walk up and slap him, high five, my man Jesus. And said, um, and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me let this iniquity be. Well, what did she do? It's all her husband. But there's one thing about a marriage in the Bible between a husband and a wife and a wife and a husband. Adam said that we shall be one flesh. What the wife does, God charges the husband. What the husband does, God charges the wife. He, you know, that guy, be upon me. We talk about her husband. And let thy handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thy audience. And hear the words of thy handmaid. Now these words are very important when it comes to Abigail. Let not my Lord... Lord, what is David? Particularly speaking, he's just a man on the run. No way. He's anointed king of, of Israel and Judah. And we're going to see in a moment that Abigail knows that. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, that's her husband, for as his name is, which meant fool, so is he. Nabal is his name. Folly, fool, is with him. So ever since the time that his parents named this guy, he's been a fool. And his name is stuck with him. And if his parents didn't name him, this is the nickname people's given him. And whenever Nabal would use his name, say, sir, what's your name? Nabal, he's announcing to people, I'm a fool. His wife says he's a fool. You know what the church is going to say to people who do not believe on David or Jesus Christ? Doesn't the Bible say we shall judge angels, we shall judge men? And at the great white throne judgment, when they have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, we will cast them off. Thou art a fool. Because Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And there's no other gods but God and Jesus Christ. So the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. So when you reject Jesus Christ as Nabal has rejected David, you're a fool. Because you've said there is no God. I've got the God of my religion. That's not a God. That's absolutely not a God. But I, thy handmaid, saw not the young, not the young man of my Lord when thou didst send. When David sent his men and they Nabal spoke rudely to them. Abigail had no idea they were there. So she's implying if she knew what had happened. She would step in. She would have done something. As she's stepping in and doing now, now that she knows. Remember, she said raisins. She said meat. She said wine. Now, therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, look at that oath to God. She's a God, Jehovah believing Jew. And as thy soul liveth, Look at that. He, she puts God and David together. Now let me say something for a moment. Is not Jesus the Son of God? 
The Lord liveth. That's Jehovah of the Old Testament. That's God Almighty. David is a type of Jesus Christ. And as I so liveth, she is putting Jehovah and David together as we would put the Lord God and Jesus together. She's not a Jehovah Witness. Seeing the Lord has withdrawn, withholding thee from coming to shed blood. How? By what Abigail has done. If Abigail had never stepped in and done what she's done, David would already be probably on the tack now of killing Nabal and everybody. Yep. The messenger would be a type of the Holy Spirit. And from avenging thyself with thy own hand. Now, as we read the rest of this passage, let's ask ourselves as far as David in shedding blood. Would it been really, really worth David to be charged with the blood of Nabal because he didn't give him food? No, that's not really a cause. It's not wartime, and God is sending Abigail so David doesn't get in trouble. God's protecting David. By himself in thy own hand. Now let thy enemies and they that seek evil, Saul, to my Lord be as Nabal. Now what is that? What did David just tell his men when he caught Saul in a cave. I'm going to let the Lord take care of him. I am not going to touch my hand with anointed. I am not going to kill him. The Holy Spirit is working on Abigail on things she doesn't even know has happened. You know what you did to Saul? You protected him. You did not kill him. Do it to my husband Nabal too. Let God take care of him. And we will see that by the end of the chapter. And now this blessing which thy handmaid has brought unto my Lord, and that was that's over here listed in verse 18, Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves, two bottles of wine, bread and wine, bread and wine, five sheep, you know what say people are called? Sheep, ready dress, five measures of parched corn, wheat or barley, 100 clusters of raisins, 200 cakes of figs, self-righteous, Adam and Eve made figs of aprons, and laid them on asses. That's the blessing she sent with them. Let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord, the soldier, the 600 men. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy handmaid. What did she do wrong? She's implying that she did not step, she did not intervene between his men and Nabal, that she should have been there. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. That is the sure mercies of David long before. Abigail's a prophetess. We call that the sure mercies of David that his house forever will have a king, even though after uh, Kaniah, oh, earth, 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 right, this man childish, and you had the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, there's the sure mercies of David spoken about from Abigail. A type of church. The church has no business saying God's all finished with the Jew. We ought to be saying, we, and Paul says, pray for the peace in Jerusalem by Jesus Christ being there. Make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil shall not be found in thee all thy days, a type of Jesus Christ. Now we know David is a sinner, but... Jesus Christ was sinless. And that typifies that battle of Revelation 19, the second advent of Jesus Christ. This woman is a prophetess. She's prophesying as the church should be doing. 
Yet a man is risen to pursue thee. Who would that be? Saul. Judas. And to seek thy soul. Saul. The Pharisee. The Sadducee. But the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the souls of thy enemies, them shall he sling out, Revelation 19, Revelation 20, as out of the middle of a sling. And that's that sling with a rock. What David killed Goliath with. Right in the head. And it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning thee and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel. <laughs> David, you're the king. That's why she calls him Lord. It is common knowledge. In Israel that David has been anointed king by Saul himself by Abigail so let's go back over here to ch chapter 25 Nabal says oh. verse 10 25 10 Nabal answered David's servant and said who is David who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his man. Uh, Nabal, your wife knows who David is. The king knows who David is. And I would pretty much put a surety that Nabal has had the word of who David is. He's just like a typical American Christian. Oh, I don't like him as the president. I won't honor him. Isn't that a shame? So I believe he knows who David is. At least Abigail does. Ruler over Israel. There's only one ruler right now, now over Israel. It's not God. It's a man. It's the king. And she's not talking about Saul because she said, a man is risen. That's Saul. To pursue thee. That's Saul. That this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offense. That's the first time that word shows up. Of heart unto my Lord. Either that thou hast shed blood causeless, first time that has shown up. So up to now, according to Abigail, everyone that David has killed has been a time of war. You cannot say David... Thou, what do I say? Thou has killed, because he hasn't. He has, but he hasn't. He's he's been done it in war. So when you get these people, oh, thou shall not kill. You shall not go into military duty. Jehovah Witnesses. Well, what do you do right there? He has killed. Didn't he kill a giant? At least one giant. Abigail says, "You're, you know, blood causes." This. What do you say about Goliath? He was the enemy of God. He was the enemy of the troops of Israel. God took him down using David. He had a reason. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, and remembering thy, remember thy handmaid, remember me, and David will. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. And blessed be thy advice. Oh, yeah. And blessed, blessed be thou, which thou hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood, Nabal and all his men, and from avenging myself with my own hand, just because he wouldn't give you food or drink, that wouldn't have been a good reason. David can go to God and say, God, yes, David, you know, we protected his man, yes. We took care of his men, yes. We may have drove away some robbers, yes. He owes his wages, yes. I'm going to put it in your hands. Okay. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. 
the Bible doctrine that many people think, well, I will do unto them as I do unto, as they do unto me. The golden rule, even in the law, that is not a rule to follow. We saw it in Proverbs as we read of our family today. Thou shalt not say, I will do unto him as he's done unto me. No, you don't. And you're more deadly fight if you do it under the law. For in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, there's an oath, which has kept me back from hurting, only time that word shows up, thee. Did you just see what, what he said there? I would have killed you too, Abigail. David was going to go in there and kill everybody of Nabal. Except thou hast hastened, he recognized her, and come to meet me, surely there had not been left of Nabal by the morning light, second advent, any that pisseth, oh, that's number two times. Again, are you going to try to tell me the Holy Spirit is going to cuss and curse? I would assume that that's in the Bible. That is a word that you can use. Now, I would not use that word as a 1945 or 54. I would not use that word to express anger. But, you know... It, I gotta go take a piss. There's a lot of other words out there that Christians use that we have no business using. I heard a man one time say, a well man in the ministry, what we should get back to using the Bible words. Well, that's one of them words that we can use. It's in the Bible. Against the wall, males, dogs. Cats, young and old. That expression tells you. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him, all the food, and she and said unto her, Go up in peace to thy house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice and accepted thy person. Now, David, she goes off. She's not with David. Song of Song, church age. David and Abigail have been separated. And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. Isn't that interesting how the Holy Spirit puts that in there? Wasn't he supposed to take care of the king, David? Man, he's got a thing, you know, it's all decked out. It's all married, just like a king would have. And he had such bounty that he didn't even notice what was missing. Yeah, but there's the king, Satan. Lavishing and lavishing in the world today. But Abigail is off taking care of David. And Nabal's heart was merry with, within him. They think they're merry. They think their feasts make them happy. For he was very drunken. Okay, intoxication. That's not for a Christian. That's the world. Wherefore, she told him nothing. Less or more. Unto the morning light. You can't talk to a drunk. They're going to be belligerent. They're going to be argumentative. They're not going to remember. They're, they're being stupid. They're being unreasonable. And when I'm doing a public ministry, if I have someone who's been drinking and like that, I, I just try to push them off, try to ignore them until they go off. And if you ever dealt with a drunk, you, you, there's nothing to do. Abigail is doing perfectly right. She can't deal with him, being a drunk. But it came to pass in the morning, second advent, 
when the wine was gone out of Nabal. Now, can I ask you a question? In what way would that wine come out of Nabal? Look at verse 34. <laughs> it goes in one hole. And... No, that'd be nice. And I guarantee what word would Nabal would have said to his man? I gotta go pee. Come on, men don't talk like that. Unless you're with your children and your family, but I've been around enough unsaved men that they don't use the word pee or urinate. See, the Bible's up to date. You don't need to change it. New Bibles have urinate and other words like that. That's not what that's not what unsaved men they use the word piss. Okay? I'm gonna spend too much time on piss, but hey, I'm just trying to say it's a Bible word. We can use it. If you're ashamed, you're ashamed of the word of God. There it is. How many words from Genesis to Revelation? That's one of the words we can use. Nowhere do you find original autographs. So it came to pass in the morning when the wine was going out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things. Oh, look at that. Look at her wisdom. She waits for the right time. When he's in, can I say a right mind that's not has been perverted by alcohol? It'd be funny if he was doing that in verse 20, 34 and explain that. David was going to come up while you're you know, doing that against the wall, my dear. <laughs> that his heart died within him. All right, interesting. His heart died. And he became as a stone, a coma. Nabal is put in a coma. Is he dead? And it came to pass about 10 days after the Lord smote Nabal, and he died. So, let's look at it like this. Preacher, pastor, style, you know, whatever ministry you got, I'm talking to you. You know, I was flatlined. I died and I went to hell. You could be flatlined, according to the Bible, and not be dead. 10 days, that guy's heart was dead. Flatlined. 10 days later, God's okay, now you're dead. What are you going to do with that one? He did not die when his heart... They became rock hard. What would that be if you were... And I'm just now I'm suggesting here. What medical condition would that have been for God to use that on him? Cholesterol. Heart into the arteries. I know I worked with a boss one time and a couple days they, they never found him. They went to his house, he was dead. That guy had eaten so many convenience store fast foods that when they did the autopsy on him, they said that his arteries, his heart, everything was 89% fat, grease, and hard. That's been the same way. Somebody that hasn't taken care of his body. And then 10 days after that, he died. And it came to pass about 10 days after, flatline, that the Lord smoked Nabal and he died. So when somebody comes to you, oh, well, I was flatlined. Well, maybe now he's a God, you weren't really dead. And when David heard that, Nabal was dead. And uh, he said, blessed be the Lord. <laughs> nice guy David is. That, that, all his psalms like that. Lord, go get him. Go kill him. Go destroy him, Lord God. All those against me, kill him. That he had pleaded, first time that word shows up, the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal. God cast the vengeance upon Nabal, not David. There it is. Colossians 3.15 You get somebody giving you a hard time, don't take care of it. Let God do it. Colossians 3.15 Now this is complete opposite of Nabal. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. 
to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. David has peace in his heart because he did not cause the death of Nabal. He had nothing to do with it. God had all to do with it. So anybody can say, well, David, you wanted to go kill him. Yeah, I wanted to go kill him, but I didn't. Has kept his servant from evil from the Lord. Has returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. So see, David is now acknowledging, if I went and killed him, I would have been guilty. And those words came from Abigail. And David went and communed with Abigail to take her to him to wife. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel, it meant a uh, park, it's a mountain, they spake to her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife. The servants that went to Nabal, rejected by Nabal, are sent back out and said, Abigail, come. David wants you. And she arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth and said, Behold, let thy handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. Look at Jesus on that one. And that's where some churches get the feet washing. Abigail, he never, never says she does it, she says it. And Abigail hasted. You know how quick we're going to go see Jesus? Hasted. In a moment of a twinkle of an eye, I think that's awfully quick. Absent from the body and present with the Lord, I think that's quick. And arose. Those that are slept in Christ, the grave shall rise. The child rise, First Thessalonians 4, and rode upon an ass. Well, look at that comma. That comma separates seven years at least of Jacob's trouble. And when we come back on white ass, it's behind Jesus Christ. With five damsels of her that went after her. When Christ calls us home, is there anybody going to go with you because of you? They went because Abigail. Of hers that went after her, and she went after the messengers of David and became his wife. Oh, what do you think that one was like? The bride of Jesus Christ? After David calls her? And the trump is blown? Now, did David go up to Abigail and say, come with me? Absolutely not. How does a rapture happen? We meet in the clouds, and then we go from the clouds to the sky where we meet Jesus. Jesus doesn't come and get us all the way. That trump of God is blown. Then we meet David or Jesus Christ. David, a type of Christ. Look at that. That's the death of a Christian. What happens when you die in the Lord? You hasted to the Lord, absent from the body, present with the Lord. What happens if you die and sleep in the Lord and the rapture happens? You arise with your maidens. You get where the maidens are. And then you go see David. You go see Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? David also took a Hanuman. So there's other brides. There's other... And I mean that there's other women besides Abigail. There's a whole body of church. There's a whole bunch of believers that are part of the church. Also, Jesus Christ comes back for Israel. And David also took a Hanuman of Jezreel. He's not content. He just has now a godly wife who loves the Lord. She's well mannered she is she's a hard worker she's beautiful the bible tells us she's smart and he takes another woman and we got no description of this woman besides the fact is she's from jezreel and they were also both of them his wives but saul had given michael forgot about that one didn't we his daughter david's wife 
to Batali, the son of Laish, which was of Gael. He's got three wives. And he'll have more by the time we get to the end. Now, did God allow this multiple? He absolutely allowed it. Did God honor it? No. And when you find these multiple marriages as these people out in Utah, you will find that the fact is when you've got multiple marriages of wives who are still alive, man, they get in all kinds of trouble. They're getting all kinds of problems. God allowed it, but he didn't condone it. But it became problems to the men. Now, with the royalty, the thing is, the more wives I have, the more children I have, the better to have a male seed. That's what usually the kings are. But David will have a problem with women in his life. And we got yet one more woman come along, and it gives David a very, very hard time. 